Hi guys, Commander Dave here. So I am so excited to be able to talk to you tonight about what's in our handbooks. So let's turn there. In our handbooks, first of all, let's make sure everybody's got a handbook. Raise your hand if you don't have one. And can one of our leaders please uh, see who's doesn't have one and then we should have some extras on the check-in table that's in the foyer out there. Uh, we just need to make sure everybody's got one, okay? Then we're gonna turn to page 22 in your handbook. Page 22 and the title looks just like this up here. Section 1.3, God is everywhere. If you're having any trouble, uh, Ask your neighbor to help you. If you are already there, look around and see if anybody needs help finding page 22. Okay, so first, let's think about what did we talk about last week? It was God is all what? All powerful, right? <clears throat> now, if you didn't get a chance to say the verse last week, I'm hoping that we'll have more time to give you to say the verse this week because it's kind of a long one, right? All right, page 22. Before we start in on page 22, let's pray, okay? We're gonna bow our heads and close our eyes real quick. All right, thanks Lord for our time today. We pray that you would help us to understand your message that we are gonna be studying tonight. And we pray that you give us ears to hear and help us to focus in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so to introduce this section, they're asking that you think about a time when you were furthest away from home, okay? What's the furthest away from home that you've been? All right, first, instead of answering, right, because I can't hear you and I already did this recording by the time you see it. So let's just do this. Raise your hand if you have been to Bend. Anyone been to Bend, Oregon? It's about an hour south of here, right? I was just there today, as a matter of fact. Okay, anybody been outside of the state of Oregon? Been to Washington or been to another state like Idaho or maybe California, right? Anybody been outside of Oregon? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Okay, uh, how about been to another country? Maybe been to Mexico or to Canada, or maybe you took a flight and went to, you know, someplace in Europe or... Maybe you went to Africa or something like that. Anybody been outside of the country? Okay, good. All right. So about 11 years ago, I took my family outside of the country. We actually went, here is where we were, right? This is Oregon, this little red mark right here on the map, on the globe. So we went from there to halfway around the world to a little place called the United Arab Emirates. Now, maybe you've heard of a place called Abu Dhabi. Okay. We were really close to Abu Dhabi, and we lived there for two years. Now, when our family was going, I was excited, but I was also kind of scared at the same time. We had to sell all of our stuff. We put everything that we owned into, like, you know, just a few suitcases, and we just went on our way. So that took a lot of courage, right? And I was kind of scared, and I was like, oh, boy. But the thing that really helped me was knowing that if I was gonna stay in Oregon, or if I was gonna go halfway around the world to Abu Dhabi, God is gonna be there with me, no matter what. And he's not only gonna be in those two places, he's gonna be with me along the way as I'm leaving and as I'm going. So that gave me a lot of comfort. Okay, so there is never a place in all of the galaxies where you could be away from God. He is everywhere. Okay, so there's a word that we can use that means God is everywhere. Do you guys know what that means? What that word is? Anybody? It starts with an O, and it's omnipotent. Sorry, omnipotent is all-powerful. Omnipresent, sorry. Omnipresent. That means God is everywhere at the same time. So, uh, we can kind of remember it like this, right? You ever seen those maps, like if you're in a place and you don't know where you are and there's a big map like on a sign and it has a big red kind of a dot on it that says, you are here, right? Well, this is what a map of God, maps God of the universe would be. 
you are here, if you're God, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And actually, there's not even enough dots on this map right here to show where God is, right? Because it would be just littered with dots. God's everywhere. Okay, so let's take a look at our memory verse set for tonight. We're going to look at this verse three different times while I'm teaching this lesson, okay? And if you can hear my dogs in the background, there they are. Okay, they're just saying hi, that's all. Uh, so, you can turn to page 26 in your book. I believe it's on page 26. And it's Psalm 139, verse 7 through 10. Okay, so we're just going to read it together the first time. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Okay? So we're going to look at it again a little bit later, and I'm going to give you some pictures and some motions to go with it. And hopefully that will help you tonight as you're trying to memorize this. Okay, but first, let's talk about uh, some of the places that God is, okay? Now, does anybody know what the name of the deepest part of the sea is called? Two words. It starts with an M. The Mariana Trench. Okay? It is seven miles deep. It's located over there by Australia. So it's kind of like towards the bottom of the of the world. If you were to look at a globe, it'd be like on the bottom part, right? Uh, and it's really an interesting thing because scientists are finding new species of undiscovered life forms all the time. Sea creatures, right? Here's one of them. They found this thing. It kind of looks like a tadpole. I'm not sure, sure exactly how big it is, but it's a little bit freaky looking. Uh, and they call it the Mariana snailfish. And if you go down almost five miles deep into the Mariana Trench, you'll find this guy right here. So they just found that like, you know, less than a year ago. And they're finding new things all the time. Okay, so... Is God there in the Mariana Trench? Yeah, of course he is. Now, think about this. What is the tallest mountain in the world? Anybody know? It starts with an E. Mount Everest. Right. Okay, now that mountain is right here. Okay, now I'm not going to tell you how tall this one is right now, but if you were to take this mountain and turn it upside down and then try to fit it into the Mariana Trench, which do you think would be deeper or taller? Would it be Mount Everest or the Mariana Trench? Raise your hand if you think it's Mount Everest. Raise your hand if you think it's the Mariana Trench. Okay, actually, if you were to do that, the Mariana Trench would be deeper than Mount Everest. You'd actually have about 1.3 miles left over from the top of Mount Everest, if you were to turn it around, to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. That's how deep the Mariana Trench is. Is God at Mount Everest? Yeah, he's everywhere, right? Is he in the Mariana Trench? We already said that. Yes, of course he is. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to look at our memory verse again. Oh, yeah, sorry. Is God in all of the stars, all of the galaxies that he created? Yeah, he's everywhere. There's nothing that God has created that he hasn't seen. There's no place that God isn't. You can't hide from God anywhere. Okay, we're going to look at our verse again. I've got it up here. If you want to read it in your book, you can. But I've just got... I've actually got this verse divided into four different sections, okay? So we're going to read it together, right up here. Ready? Begin. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. 
Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? Now, I got a picture of a guy who's hitchhiking, right? Because he's like, hey, I'm trying to flee from God. And this actually relates to our story. It's going to help you remember this. Okay? So, can you hitchhike your way away from God's presence? No, you can't do that. So, we're going to use that as our first sign. It's a thumbs up hitchhiking sign. Okay? Here's the next part. Ready? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Okay? So, God lives in heaven. Anybody know what Sheol is? Sheol is another place, or another name that we call, for the place called hell. Right? Now, interesting, right? Because you think, wait a minute, if God's in heaven, how can he be in hell too? Well, here's the thing. In heaven, God... God's face shines. Jesus is on the throne in heaven. The Bible tells us that. And all of his goodness is definitely in heaven. In hell, God knows what's going on down there, but his goodness is not in hell. His wrath is in hell. Remember in Matthew 25 that hell was created for the devil and his angels. And it's because of sin that hell has to be. There's got to be punishment for the sins that we commit against God. And so he takes all of that wrath and anger against sin, and he unleashes it in hell. So that's the part of God that hell sees. And the Bible is very clear. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. God's there, but not his goodness and the things that we're going to see about him in heaven. It's all of his wrath that we have taken on because we're sinners, because we did bad things. We stopped listening to God. Okay, here's the next part. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the other uttermost parts of the sea, we're going to swim like we're in the sea. Now, this is a picture right here of a hotel, an underwater hotel, which is pretty cool, right? I don't know if I would actually like to go there. Like, I'd probably want to go just check it out, but I don't think I'd want to sleep there. I'd probably get nightmares about the sharks. But this is a great illustration of if you were to go down to the sea, God's there in the sea too. Okay, here's the next part. Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. So we're going to stick out our right hand because no matter where you are, God wants you to trust him. And he's always waiting for you to repent and to trust in him, no matter what's going on. He is the author of, they say he's the author of second chances. Here is a second chance story for you. Okay, we're going to look at the story of Jonah. Anybody know this story? You can find it in the book of Jonah. It's in the first chapter. And Jonah is found in the Old Testament. So I'm just going to do a quick recap. And then we're going to move on. Okay, so here's how the story goes. Uh, so Jonah is a guy who is a prophet from God. A prophet is somebody who hears directly from God. And then, like, God will give him a message. And then God will say, okay, now that message I just gave you, I want you to tell it to these people over here. So Jonah was doing that like all the time. He was always like hearing from God and then he'd tell somebody, hey, this is what God told me to tell you, right? Which to me, if I was a prophet, it would be exciting and it would be the scariest thing, right? Because you're hearing from God and I'd be just like, whoa, like when am I going to hear from him next? You wouldn't know, right? Be weird. But Jonah, this was kind of his job, right? So God told Jonah one day, he said, I want you to go to Nineveh, a city called Nineveh, and I want you to tell everybody in that city that they need to turn their attitude around towards me, and they need to start serving me with their hearts and everything else, because they are doing such bad things that if they don't turn their hearts around, then I'm going to destroy their city. So that's what God said to Jonah. Jonah didn't like that message. He's, he was a little upset about that because he was just like, wait a minute, if I say that to those guys, 
Um, I've heard they're not very nice people. They might beat me. They might put me in jail. They might even kill me if they don't like that message. I'm not sure I want to do that. And so Jonah was like, oh, you know what? I think I'm just going to run away from this assignment. So he went down and got on a boat because he lived near the sea. And he decided he was going to run away in the opposite direction of where Nineveh was. So he got on a boat that went the opposite direction of Nineveh. Did God know what was going on? Yeah, of course. God knows everything. And God was with him the whole time anyways. Can you escape from God's presence? No. Somehow Jonah forgot about that. So he gets on this boat and they're going out to sea. They get out to sea and all of a sudden the winds start coming up and the waves start getting bigger and bigger. And they're in the middle of a full-blown storm. And the sailors are getting scared. And so they're like, hey, what happened? We were doing so well, and we looked at the weather predictions. Everything looked like it was going to be a smooth sail here. Something's not right. Who is it that is having a tough time and isn't doing what they're supposed to do? They knew something was up. So they went to Jonah, and Jonah's like, look, Okay, I'm going to complain. It's me, right? God is upset with me. He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell these guys some bad news that could be bad for me, and I don't want to tell them that. And they're like, Jonah, come on now. And so what they end up doing is Jonah says, here's what you should do. In order to save this boat and all your lives, just throw me overboard, okay? Because I guarantee, I, I'm pretty sure that if you do that, the waves will calm down. So they did that. They threw him overboard. And as soon as he, almost immediately, he was swallowed up by a big fish. Okay? Now, it doesn't say if it was a whale. It doesn't say if it was a shark. I don't know what kind of fish it was, but it was a big one. That's what the Bible says. It was a big fish. He gets swallowed up by this fish. Now, he doesn't get eaten by the fish as far as chomped up. He's swallowed whole. And he stays in the belly of this fish alive for three days and three nights. He decides he's going to pray. So he prays for three days and three nights. God changes his heart. And then he changes his attitude. And is like, okay, God, I'll do it. I'll go talk to these people. So as soon as he agrees to do that, he gets spit up on shore by the fish. Short, the fish just throws him right up. And he's like, whoa, hey. Okay, God, where do you want me to go now? Nineveh, obviously. So... He travels over to Nineveh, and he tells them the message, hey, you guys are in big trouble, unless you turn your attitude around and start serving God. They actually receive the message, and they do that. Praise God. Mission accomplished, right? Now, there's more to that story, but that's kind of the gist of it. All right, now I'm going to read some verses that talk about more about this idea of that God is everywhere, all right? The first one comes in Jeremiah 23, 24. It says, Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. God knows everything. God is everywhere. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay? So here he's saying, hey, don't be afraid, right? I'm going to be with you all the time. And again, we're given that promise that God is always with us, no matter what. And where we are, God is always with us. Deuteronomy 31, 4. Be strong of, and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Now that phrase, he will not leave you or forsake you, is actually found in the Bible four different times. So you know that that's an important thing that we need to remember. God will not leave us or forsake us. Okay, let's take a look at our memory verse one more time. Now this time, I don't have the memory verse up here. I just have the reference, okay? But I've got the pictures, and then I'm hoping that you can remember each one of these signals that we're going to do, right? And then as we say the verse, you can say it in your book. You can just... Look in, on page 22 and look at your book again. Uh, no, I'm sorry, page 26 in your book. Uh, you can try to say it with me, right? 
if you if you want to challenge yourself and try not to look at your book, but we're going to say it together. All right. One, two, three. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. Okay, so let's pray and then... Uh, I'll have Jim divide you guys up into your groups. You can do the same groups you did last week. If we got more kids, um, I'll let the leaders work that out. Okay, so let's pray, and then you guys can get going. Thanks, Lord, for our time today, and thank you that you're always with us. I pray that if uh, there's anybody here that doesn't hasn't trusted in you and repented, that they would do that tonight. And it doesn't take very much to do it. It's just talking to to you, just like you're talking to somebody else. We just can't see you, that's all. But you're here with us, so we trust that. And Lord, just uh, thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so have a good time in your small groups, and I will be back at the end before we dismiss. Uh, I'll be back on screen with, hopefully, with uh, our missionary, Awana missionary, Jerry uh, Berheim. And we tried to do this last week. It didn't work out, so we're going to give it another shot. But I'll see you guys uh, in a little bit. Have a good time in your group.